So let's get into the preview. They play three games this weekend, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday afternoon. I'm going to give you the pitching matchups. We'll get into some of their statistics, and then we will look at, you know, what does what do the Royals do well? It's been a while since we've seen them. Uh, we're going to see them nine more times in the next 30 games. So that's, you know, we'll see them six more times after this weekend. Um, but, you know, 20% of the next games are going to be against uh, the Royals. So here's the pitching matchups. Game one, Friday, 7-10. It's going to be Daniel Lynch, a left-handed pitcher, who's 4-9 on the season with a 470 ERA. Strikes out about 8.5 per nine, walks almost 4 per nine. Has a 330 batting average on balls in play and a 424 FIP. So he's pitching a little bit better, would indicate he's a little bit unlucky in the way that uh, his FIP and ERA line up. He's going to be facing off against Drew Hutchinson, who over his last three outings has been pretty dog doggone good. 15 and two thirds innings pitched, four earned runs, and has gone one and one in those games. Keeping the Tigers competitive in the games that he starts has been. You know, I hate to overstate the case of Drew Hutchinson to call him a revelation because I'm not going to do that. But he's been pleasantly surprising. There's the calm way of saying it. He's been pleasantly surprising. And so, you know, it's one of those things that hopefully he can keep them competitive as we go into Friday night and get into uh, – their bullpen because we're going to talk about their bullpen in a little bit game two saturday at 6 10 is going to be jonathan heasley he's a right-handed pitcher two and seven on the season with a 522 era strikes out about seven per nine walks almost four and a half per nine there's a 270 average or 278 batting average on balls in play and a 598 fit so like not great in the independent cases that he can control where balls are not in play He's going to be facing off against the aforementioned Michael Pineda, who in his last two starts, he got injured in the second one, but the outing before that was his worst start on July 16th against the Guardians, where he went a whopping two innings and gave up eight runs. And then on the 23rd, he went three innings and got injured. Uh, and we haven't seen him since, right? He's been off for a month. An opportunity for the Tigers uh, in that situation to potentially make a run, but it's going to 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 make a run at a win, I should say. But it's going to be completely dependent on Pineda coming off uh, off the IL. I wouldn't expect him to go more than four, maybe five innings on Saturday uh, and getting into the bullpen, which makes Drew Hutchinson's outing on Friday that much more important, right? He needs to eat up five, six, Asking a lot here, maybe seven innings to keep that those arms fresh for Saturday because Pineda is going to need some help. Game three, Sunday afternoon. Sunday afternoon, 140, Brady Singer. We've seen him before, and it has not gone well. Seven and four on the season with a 333 ERA, strikes out about nine per in nine innings. Uh, Walks about two per nine innings, has a 300 betting average on balls in play, and a 362 FIP. He is going to be facing off against Matt Manning, who is looking to rebound from what we talked about earlier in the recap. Rocked against Seattle. Just they were sitting on the slider. It was middle, middle, left over the plate consistently. And he gave up some home runs, three of them to be uh, exact. Uh, he left after two and a third innings against Seattle and gave up seven runs. So he's definitely going to be looking for a bounce back. And just before we get into it, Paul Robinson, you may skip the series. I wouldn't blame you. I wouldn't blame you because you can almost expect there to be disappointment when you play the Royals because they're just a pesky team. Here we go. Here's what they do well, okay? They beat the Tigers. That's what they do well. They We have nine games left against them. They're a pesky, pesky, pesky team. They're top 10 in K-rate, so they don't strike out. They're the 10th best team in K-rate, but they only walk about 8% of the time. But when they are on base, they run the bases well, they create runs, and they steal a lot of bases. You got to keep them off the base pass. You got to be better on, you know, maybe trying to raise that strikeout rate or converting balls to outs 
as opposed to letting them get on base and then havoc just ensue because that's what happens when the Royals get on base. Some things they don't do well, they they don't have great pitching. I read you those statistics of the three starters. The best one, obviously, being Singer, and we knew that. But what for whatever reason, the Tigers have a knack for making the worst pitchers look like Cy Young, look like Jacob DeGrom, look like the Houston Astros version of Justin Verlander, Max Scherzer. Throw any name in there of dominant pitching you want to see, and the Tigers make bad pitching look that way. But their pitching's not great. They have the third worst pitching staff, like starters and relievers, according to Fangraphs, in the entire MLB. And their bullpen is the worst. So if you want a chance <clears throat> to win this series, you have to get to the bullpen as early as possible. So if we want to make a prediction, I want to ask you guys to go ahead and throw some predictions in the comments, and we'll throw them up there. Do the Tigers win this series, yes or no? They're prime for a series win. Listen, as bad as this series against the Mariners was, the last time the Tigers lost a series was against the Chicago White Sox all over two weeks ago, middle of August. Since then, they split with the Guardians. They beat the Angels. They split with the Giants. So it's it's there for the taking if you can do things the right way. Convert balls and play to outs. Don't make outs on the base pass uh, in, in game two against the Mariners. Kerry Carpenter ripped, ripped the ball to the right field corner and then gets thrown out at second base, which would have could have potentially been a tying run since Soto walked in the fifth run for the Mariners. I just don't know or trust that the Tigers can do those types of things right consistently. So if you can get to the bullpen quickly in this game, and if you let their pretty bad pitching staff go deep into the game, you're going to walk out of Comerica Park with a series loss because the Royals know how to win against the Tigers. So you have to do things right more often than you do them wrong, and that's just been the problem with the 2022 season. So let me get to some of these comments over here and see what we got paul robinson says nope they don't win they lose two to one okay paul thanks for the prediction i i i can't argue with that they they've not shown enough to say yeah they're gonna they're gonna sweep this series not against the royals hopefully Kreider and torgelson can have some kind of an impact but again do we expect that no we don't expect that because of just the, what we've seen 2022 is just a series of disappointments. That's what we're going to call it. It's just the season of disappointment. Um, you know, Cody, he talks about our bullpen doing well for a while there. Yeah, Cody, our bullpen, and it still ranks pretty well. It's just when you're asking these guys consistently to get four, three, sometimes five, six innings out of the bullpen, it's very, very taxing. And I don't know what it is with Alex Lang lately, but it just seems like the movement that we've seen on his pitches earlier in the season prior to the All-Star break, it just isn't there anymore. And I don't know why that is. I don't know if it's fatigue. I don't know if it's, you know, just different pressure that he's putting on the baseball when he's throwing it or the arm slot that he's throwing from or what because of the, you know, the grind of 162 major leagues game season. I don't know, but I was watching him in game two, and I was just like, man, that the ball that used to like break from the inside corner to the outside corner on that two seam run would just is not there. And then the curve or the slider that he throws just being thigh high middle of the plate, just, oof, just brutal. And that's why he got tagged for the runs that he got tagged for a, a triple from uh Frazier, and then you know, a, a, a double from the next guy up. and the game's sealed at that point. It was just not great from uh, the bullpen. But again, you know, when you're asking for so many, so many things to happen, it can it can be difficult. 